people should be aware that um, our charity operates on what's called two and a half FTEs, two and a half full-time equivalent members of staff. So I think we do an amazing job with just two and a half FTEs. And one of the reasons we can do that is that, first of all, we have the very committed people working with us, but we're a virtual charity. So when COVID came along, it wasn't unusual for us. We all were working from home and it was the quite the norm. And that partly is, explains perhaps why our income was better during the COVID pandemic than it had been in preceding years. So that's all our fundraising staff are to be uh, congratulated on, on really a magnificent achievement. And if you've ever seen some of their grant applications, they are really highly professionally put together. And we have some hopes um, and expectations of some perhaps larger chunks of money coming in over the next 12 months. I don't want to sort of review where we are, but I want to highlight two programs that we are looking for assistance in, in terms of funding. One relates to uh, antibiotic stewardship. Um, we believe that antibiotic stewardship programs are something that can help drive antibiotic usage down, um, but we want to embark on a program in which we get GPs and community pharmacists to triage patients that have got a lower respiratory tract infection who present themselves at the GP practice. They are referred back to the community pharmacist. The community pharmacist um, interviews them, does uh, what's called a CRP test, a point of care test, uh, to establish whether they've got a viral or bacterial infection, and then decides what should happen to the patient. When a pilot or feasibility study was undertaken in the northeast of England, of about 120 patients um, that were triaged in this way, in the end only three to four were prescribed antibiotics. So that tells you what is possible with good consultation. And all the patients that were involved in that study said it was a very positive experience for them and they were very grateful that they got involved. We'd like to see this rolled out in a wider context um, nationally and our aim is to obtain evidence-based statistically sound data to be able to go to NHS England and say look this is what you can do. You can release GP's time uh, which is you know, at, the, at a premium. Um, you can get more patient involvement and importantly you can get antibiotic prescribing reduced. So we're looking for assistance in making that program happen. So if you know of any funds that might be interested in that or you have personal monies that you might be able to help us with or you can spread the word, then please do. And I also say that this is all being taped today, videotaped, so we will be putting the whole event up on YouTube. So although we don't have a huge audience, I'm hoping that we will have a lot of people wanting to listen to what we have to say. The other program I want to just mention is when the charity started, we were keen to look at repurposing of existing drugs and we have worked on a combination of a beta-lactam antibiotic and a beta-lactamase inhibitor which looks promising in terms of treating drug resistant acinetobacter for example. And again we're wanting to progress that combination more towards a clinical trial but again that requires funds for that to happen. As a small charity, we want to be able to leverage what we have with other donors who may have deeper pockets than us. So one of our aims and objectives over the next year or two is to talk to some of the bigger funders like NIHR uh, and the like, the NHS, and see if we can work together with them. And with some of the work that we funded to date, we've asked always that the people receiving the money, whether they can get some sort of financial uplift by us donating the money. In other words, what can the seed money that we give provide them which enables them to get larger sums of money. So those are two programs that we have uh, are looking to, to fund going forward. 
But just in conclusion, I, I want to say, first of all, I thought that um, we had some very interesting talks today. Uh, I think the patient videos and talks are very moving, and they ought to be used by us to reach out to the 90-odd thousand people who have an antibiotic-resistant infection. The other thing I want to say is that we didn't hear anything from researchers that we have funded. So I think going forward I'd very much like to see some of the researchers we funded not only talk about their work at a meeting like this, but we will do a podcast of what they are doing and why the money that we have provided has been of value to them, uh, because I think that would be important. It's all about people and sharing their experiences uh, with a wider audience. And social media, YouTube, etc., help us to reach out to a much bigger group than we could ever hope to get in one room. So, in conclusion, thank you very much for coming today. Uh, the current COVID situation, I think, has put a lot of people off, uh, not surprisingly. And fingers crossed that we get through this um, without having to go into further lockdowns mask wearing and all the other terrible things that we've had to put up with over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. So thank you for attending and you're welcome to have a, a cup of tea or coffee now. Yes, no? Um, and uh, we'll have the annual general meeting after that. Um, please, you're welcome to stay for the annual general meeting. We'll just run through the uh, year, approve uh, hopefully Simon as chair and do some of the other uh, governance things that we need to do as a charity. So thank you very much.